So we're here backstage at End of the Road Festival and you've just performed some of the soundtracks from your films. So how does preparation for a gig like this differ from performing with Radiohead? I mean, in a way, it's easy to talk about the similarities in that we decide on a set list at the last minute, we play whatever songs are sounding good, and it, it feels like weirdly like being in, in a band. Not even weirdly, it feels rightly like being in a band. I think people assume with classical music, it's all decided a long time in advance, and it's not... Um, but it's, it's more like choosing... Well, tonight it felt like choosing a lot of three or four minute pieces of, of interest in music that people would, you know. I mean, we've all been to classical concerts where you can't wait for something to end. And the good thing about what we do is everything is like three or four minutes long and then it's on to another, you know, hopefully interesting idea. So, and it was good tonight. People were watching and listening and were, didn't seem to be um, too unengaged. So that was really made it fun. Um, what have you got lined up for the future of your record label? You've been putting out some classical pieces on there. What can we look out for with that? Well, we're still waiting for s enough interest in the first two releases to justify carrying on, just because I know how traditionally middle-aged musicians get into having weird vanity projects where they you know, have a record label and, and feel good about it. But I would feel bad about it if it didn't, you know, at least get some money to the musicians who made the recordings and that seems to be quite a struggle at the moment so we're waiting to see what happens with the first two. So there's something about classical musicians that, that does yeah. inspire and excite me. Um, it's like someone once asked a classical player once said, um, wow you're so lucky I'd give anything to be able to play like you and they replied, well would you give five hours a day because that's what they practice every day, it's, it's insane. So to make those sounds it's uh, they dedicate their life to this one instrument yeah. and that's yeah. when you realize that it makes watching them play even more exciting I think. You introduced tonight's show there was a slide up that said that the musicians you've worked with who are on stage um, have worked with you on Radiohead albums on your soundtracks and everything like that what could you say that these young musicians have taught you most to do with your approach to music? They've taught me that they play very old instruments, but it's still a modern technology because they make these new sounds with them. So it's still, it's still something forward-looking. And I find it interesting that all of the electronic music, a lot, most of it that was done in the classical world in the 60s, just sounds really dated. But all the stuff that was written for quartets and, and actual acoustic instruments sounds very fresh still and still sounds unusual and colorful and and it makes you think that, that maybe you know it's weird but then with writing soundtracks for films you're constantly fighting against sound libraries and they're getting better and better and they're you know so it's sort of it's it's that it's a constant battle between not sounding like you're just using a sample library and getting the most out of um, orchestras but yeah w one day we'll be outrun I'm afraid but at the moment it's all right Radiohead for some reason have a TikTok page and there's absolutely no clues given away what it's all. It's, is this something that's like the Kid A era online blog that you're just trying to put out a mysterious message to your fans and there's not much to it? Or is there something we should be looking for? No, it's just, he's, he's a very difficult character Chief, because we have this, this friend of us who's called um, Chieftain Muse and he's really been hammering away and trying to get back to his sort of 90s heyday where he had some fame and we're trying to help him out and it's not going great at the moment. But um, he doesn't really understand sort of social media. And he's weird. He kind of goes from being angry to being enthusiastic. He's one of those people, and it's just a bit hard to deal with. I don't know. Have you seen him, his videos there? Um, only I've only seen them through what you've done. Yeah. And I've sort of, look, you know, like yeah, everyone probably, else. That's probably fun, really, yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. The, the bear character that was featured on the Amnesiac artwork is featured in it. I think a lot of people are like, oh, this means it's the 20th anniversary, that kind of thing. Yeah, well, we missed but that. It was last year. 20th anniversary was last year. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, as is typical with Radiohead, we never plan ahead very well. So, yeah. Okay, finally, um, it's now five years since the last Radiohead album. Um, is there anything in the pipeline that might come out soon, or is it just uh, a case of wait and see? Uh, well, Ed's, uh, I think, going to make another record. I've made this record with Tom and Tom Skinner um, that's going to come out soonish. 
Um, so there's there's some music around, but getting the five of us together is going to wait for everyone to have time and energy for it. And Arise, the trouble is, because it's like a bit of a, we only like touring when we've got new songs to play, and we only play new songs when we've recorded and written and recorded new songs, and that doesn't happen until we get together and start rehearsing, and you know, it's quite long and drawn out. Well, thank you very much for your time, and I really enjoyed the performance. That was really great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice to talk to you. Thanks.